acting sooner rather than later would almost certainly have a very high payoff and waiting uh, will just increase the cost dramatically. We got to fix this. That is the essence of the problem. We're going to have to deal with what is necessary, not with what is possible. Things have moved compared to where they were, but not nearly enough. People have got to get scared. Without energy, there is no economy. Without climate, there is no environment. Without economy and environment, there's no material well-being, there's no civil society, there's no national or international security. And the way the world is getting today more than 80 percent of the energy its economy needs is wrecking the climate that its environment needs. Who is to blame? Is it the producers or the consumers? Is it the developed world that's been using so much energy or the developing world that is about to expand its energy? Creating an emissions budget and really take this analogy of just budgeting as we would in our businesses or our homes. If we know the target that we're trying to reach, the greenhouse gas concentration target in the atmosphere, we can then essentially work backwards and figure out, well, what's the emissions budget we would have to live within in order to meet that target? I argue we should start with some sort of relatively modest pricing mechanism, whether through a cap and trade or a carbon tax. And that revenue can, of course, be used for a lot of different purposes. You could use that to reduce income taxes. In addition to the price signal, you need an R&D policy, and crucially in this country, you need the state regulators to get on. We know that CCS can be a cost-effective method of significantly reducing a global greenhouse gas emissions. And I would assert that it's safer to put the CO2 underground than continue pumping it into the atmosphere. We cannot meet the targets set by the IEA and the IPCC without CCS. The demonstration and deployment of carbon capture and sequestration uh, is an absolutely essential ingredient of any adequate strategy. The key thing is indeed the establishment of a carbon charge. Every way we generate electricity in this country needs a technological fix to be an equal contributor to a low carbon world. Solar needs it, wind needs it, there's nuclear needs additional technology, coal, natural gas. I would put a three mil charge on every kilowatt hour of electricity in the United States. That would generate 11 billion dollars a year. And then I would use that money to stimulate the type of R&D and deployment if you decide that you would rather have low prices, you can forget, uh, not only in, in independence, you'll become more dependent. While everybody in this room understands this, I don't think that most people around the country, including you know, well-read and smart people, understand that oil prices at $150 a barrel help embolden Russia to invade Georgia or Iran to misbehave or Hugo Chavez to misbehave or um, uh, provides at least some support for Al-Qaeda and, and I think the public does care about these things and we need to make it clear that these things are not unrelated. Energy is always about scale, it's always about the time constants involved, and it's always about the intensity of the capital employed. And these factors play out time and time again. We want, on the one hand, less dependence on foreign oil, and on the other hand, we want low prices. And I think that that's inconsistent. Whether through a gradually increasing explicit carbon tax, which I unapologetically prefer, or through a stealth carbon tax in the form of a cap and trade system, I think we have a chance to um, begin to grow federal revenues that we're going to desperately need in the years ahead. Um, at the same time, we deal with oil import issues uh, and with climate change. There is no sense of urgency, apparently, about getting these things demonstrated and sequestration going. And so you, 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 you put one horse in the starting gate and then you shoot it. We're not struggling so much in the renewable electricity area with building wind turbines or even to some extent large solar thermal. Our biggest challenge is getting transmission lines built. We're not going to move electricity from the Mojave to LA or from the Dakotas to Chicago if we don't build massive new transmission capacities. We need to be doing the things that we know how to do now and that are near coming to market and get them out there if we want to deal with the urgency of climate change. This whole area of innovation will be for naught if we can't get over the valley of death and get large-scale deployment. And I think loan guarantees managed well by the federal government can be quite instrumental in moving those projects forward.
How do you square that which requires high coordination in a sense monopoly control to some degree? How do you square that with a free market? In Washington, you tend to think of these two domains. There's one called energy policy and one called environmental policy, and they're just separate. They're separate laws, separate regulators, separate committees. Who is going to decide on these large investment questions, and how is it going to be decided? The grid has to be built out to accommodate whatever supply mix we will have in the future, and what will our electricity supply mix be in the future. That is a, a tall order. We will not know until, until some extent we, we make some decisions on climate change. Let's get to work on changing the incentives for a utility industry whose financial health is still tied mostly to increases in utility sales at the retail level and whose earnings opportunities remain tied almost exclusively to asset ownership rather than the adroit integration of diverse asset portfolios. We are at a point where the, the leader is the critical element. It has to be a White House action. It has to be amongst the core tenets of the administrations. I would say the most dangerous thing that on the electricity side that uh, is a barrier now is a lack of willingness to face the vulnerability uh, of the grid. The real question, I think, is whether or not it's going to be one of the top three initiatives of the president. It's clear that the president has a, an agenda setting function, we all know that, and the real issue, I think, if we're talking about leadership, is that climate change going to be on that, at the top of that agenda. The biggest barrier is the historic opposition of the automobile uh, industry, uh, for the last century anyway, to electricity. It turns out that there's almost always one or several very, very significant leaders who take on the challenge and decide and convince people that it's worth following. We gotta fix this. That is the essence of the problem.